What's up? It's Fuller Mo, the founder of GFX World. In this video, I'm going to show you how to become a Photoshop thrift lord. Let's get it. I've bought and sold a lot of vintage t-shirts over the years, so my closet is full of perfectly distressed graphics. Here's a few of them. These are shirts that I've had for a very long time. I can't imagine selling these. We've got nine inch nails. The graphic on the back of this shirt is just perfectly worn in. I love it. Both of these Metallica shirts are just completely thrashed to death. The back print is just torn up and shredded, faded in all of the right areas. I could talk about these shirts all day, but the reason we're actually here is because you can use these vintage graphics with distressing on them to create your own textures. So essentially you just wanna look at the graphic and sort of pinpoint little areas of distressing and then take photos of them. So if you have a really nice camera, you should definitely use that. If you wanna use your iPhone, that's totally cool. That's what I'm gonna use. If you've got a tripod, break that out. Highly recommended. That way you can get some really crispy photos. Once you've taken photos of your vintage t-shirts and sort of focused on those areas of distressing within the graphics, you can bring the photos into Photoshop. Now for this tutorial, I'm literally just using my iPhone because I thought, you know, that would be most applicable to everyone out there watching. Um, a lot of you just have smartphones. And so if you want to just use your camera on your phone, you can definitely still get some decent results. I have an iPhone 15 Pro. And so you can turn on the max raw feature, which gives you a little bit more high resolution uh, results with your photos. Now, if you have a really nice camera, for instance, what I'm filming this video on, definitely use that. You just wanna get as high resolution photos as possible. So let's open this photo in Photoshop. Now, right away, I'm gonna be presented with a bunch of different um, you know, adjustments that I can make on the right side. And that's because this is in Apple Pro Raw format. And so it allows me to basically make some tweaks before I actually bring it into my canvas uh, in Photoshop. And so I'm gonna zoom in because this is kind of the general area we're gonna to use to create this texture. The first thing I'll do is up at the top, I'll just change it to black and white right away because that's ultimately what we're gonna need the photo to be. And then I'll adjust the exposure. So that's under light and I'll bring that up a bit first. And I'm just sort of like eyeballing it. I wanna preserve like as much of the details as possible, but um, I, I don't want there to be like a ton of artifacts within sort of the white areas of the texture. Next, I'll bring down the shadows and I'm gonna actually bring them all the way down to negative 100. We'll increase the whites a little bit. Now, just to be clear, these are the adjustments I'm making to my image. Um, you're gonna wanna just play around with these different settings and figure out what works best for you. But the only other you know adjustment that I'm gonna make is under effects and I'm going to bring in some grain and I'm gonna bring that up to 40, okay? So this is what mine looks like. I'm gonna click open. The first thing I'll do is grab the lasso tool over here on the left side. And essentially you just wanna pick out whatever area you think will work well for you know your texture. So there's actually lots of different little sections here that you could work with. Um, but we're going to grab this area right here because I just really love that you get this big sort of pocket of distressing here. And then it continues down sort of like looks a little bit like a lightning bolt. So I'm going to use the lasso tool and just essentially select sort of like an odd area. So this shape can kind of be whatever you want it to be. I think you should try to be um, sort of thoughtful in terms of like where you're sort of moving the lasso. Um, not, you know, like you don't you wouldn't want to do like something like harsh, like straight across like this. You know, you want to make sure that like you're getting the full sort of areas of distressing right here, getting these little tails that trail off over here. But this shape can kind of be whatever, okay? As long as it's like sort of captured the areas that you wanna capture. So I'm good with this. The next thing I'll do is hit Command J. So we've got this little area of texture picked out. Now the next thing I'll do is at the bottom of the layers panel, I'll click create new fill or adjustment layer and I'll select solid color and we'll just change it to white. We'll click okay and so now it sort of blends into the background, right? So this is probably good how it is, but I'm gonna show you how to make some further edits. So the first thing we'll do is mask out this texture layer. So at the bottom of your layers panel, you see this little rectangle with the circle, it says layer masks. We're gonna make sure the layer mask thumbnail is selected right here. And then we'll grab the brush tool on the left side 
and you can probably just use the the stock sort of hard round brush and adjust the size however you need to and then you'll make the foreground black and then you can go in and sort of paint out any little areas here so i'll just sort of like make sure that these tails over here are kind of clean and they're not like cut off harshly i think that's just going to help us out overall when we're using this uh, texture obviously you'll have to do more or less depending on what your texture looks like but this is pretty good right here okay so the next thing i'll do is i'll grab the rectangular marquee tool and then i'm just gonna draw a, a box around this section and then i'll go to image crop the next thing i'm gonna do is actually triple the size of this image now the reason i'm doing that is because i shot this on an iphone so while it is somewhat high resolution it's not exactly where we need it to be and so i'll just go to image image size and under percent i'll just change it to 300 click ok and so now as you can see like it looks a lot more low resolution looks a lot more grainy and so we can make some further adjustments to it i'll go to create new fill or adjustment layer i'll select levels and then i'll just sort of play around with these levels a bit to bring back more of the black bring in a little bit more of those mid-tones, kind of wash out a little bit of those artifacts with the highlights. But we still want like these little pockets of white right here in the mid-tones. We don't want to completely get rid of those. So we, we wouldn't really want it like this. We want to preserve a little bit of that. You just have to use your own judgment and sort of experiment with this levels adjustment and get it to where it needs to be. I'm good with this. We'll zoom out and then I'll select that texture layer and then I'll go to edit, define brush preset. So this brush is coming up at 1920 pixels, which is decent. I would say anywhere between 2000 and like maybe 3500 is going to be good for this particular scenario. And so I'm going to rename this one. I'll click OK. Here's the graphic we'll be distressing. This is the artwork for my Thrift Lord brush set. It's out right now. It's 50 different brushes. I know a lot of you don't necessarily have the time to go through and make these individual brushes. So if you want to just have more to use, you know, just another tool that you can have in your toolkit, I definitely recommend checking this out. It's perfectly dialed in for you. Um, and it even comes with a little recipe book that kind of shows you um, different ways that you can combine textures and uh, create some really nice vintage effects. The first thing I'm gonna show you is how to set up these brushes so they work most effectively. What I would recommend is just making this part of the post design process. So maybe this is something that you do at the very end. I recommend spending another 10 to 15 minutes on your design when you think it's done. And so you could make this part of that process. And so when you're ready to do that, you'll wanna put everything into one group. So I'll show you what that looks like. I'm gonna ungroup this. Basically, you just want to grab your bottom layer and then hold down the shift key and then select your top layer, then hit command or control G and that's gonna put them all in their own group. And so now you've got one group with all of your artwork and then at the bottom of your layers panel, you can click layer masks, okay? So now you've got this layer mask applied to the group and this is where we're going to add in the texture, right? Let's grab our brush tool. We'll make sure the foreground is set to black and then the brush is already selected for us. If you don't see it for some reason in this top left corner, I'm pretty sure you'll see it, but you can always go to window brushes and then you'll see the brushes that are available to you here. So we'll just sort of keep this docked over here. Cool, all right, so here's our brush. And now the other thing you'll wanna open up is brush settings. So you can find that under window brush settings. Once again, make sure the layer mask thumbnail is selected. Now, if you just wanna use the texture sort of out of the box and click around and add it that way, that's cool. Like you can definitely do that, but here's why I wouldn't recommend it. So if you do that, you're gonna end up with repeating textures that are gonna be like very obvious, right? Now, if you go and buy some thrift store t-shirts uh, that are super distressed, they're not gonna look like this, right? They're gonna have very authentic looking textures that are actually worn in uh, by humans. And so they're not gonna have repeated textures, okay? And so that's a very common mistake. I see it all the time and I'm gonna show you how you can avoid it. Now, in a perfect world, you'd be using this brush like it's a paintbrush, right? And so maybe there would be times when you're using a paintbrush and you're just sort of like dabbing little areas, cool. But what we wanna do is actually drag this, right? Now, if you do that without making any changes up front, 
it's gonna look really bad, okay? And so that's why having brush settings open is important because this is where we can make some adjustments. At the top of your brush settings window, you're gonna see brush tip shape, select that, and then at the bottom, you'll see spacing. Increase the spacing because that will allow us to sort of use that brush technique. And now there's gonna be actually like gaps so that it creates more sort of negative space. Um, the problem is that we still have these repeated sections and we're trying to avoid that. So this is a good first step, but there's even more adjustments that you can make. Go down to Shape Dynamics and click Flip X Jitter and Flip Y Jitter at the bottom. Now as I'm using this brush, it's actually flipping vertically and horizontally. So this is a good way that you can avoid that repetitiveness within your texture. Now there's even more adjustments that you can make. Underneath Scattering, you can increase that and essentially that's going to shift where the brush is placed as you're using it. So now when I brush in a straight line, you can see it's actually moving above and below the line as I paint. Just another way that it's going to make this texture more unique each time you use the brush. You can increase the count as well. So essentially this is like stacking brushes on top of one another. So now I'm using actually two brushes which is just gonna make the overall texture a lot more heavy. The last thing I like to do with these brush settings is turn on noise. Now you can't really make any further adjustments with the amount of noise or anything like that, but I found that when you use the brush with noise turned on and zoom in, you can kind of just see that little bit of extra graininess that it adds to it. And I think overall it just helps with, you know, the vintage effect. Another cool thing about using layer masks and working in this mostly non-destructive way is that you can not only add more texture, but you can subtract it as well. So if you just change the foreground to white and then ideally use the same brush that you added the texture with, you can take it away as well. So now if I use this same brush, and paint over the canvas, I'm subtracting texture from it, right? So if I just thought it looked way too heavy, this would be a really good sort of organic way to take away some of that texture that we added. If you're good with this brush and you've got your settings all dialed in, maybe you wanna use this in the future for other projects. In the top right corner of your brushes window, you'll see this little hamburger menu. Click that with your brush selected and then go to export selected brushes. Now you can save this out. We'll just call it vintage brush, click save. So now as you continue to create these brushes, you can essentially just stack them up over here and then select all of them and do that same process. And so then each time you open your brushes, you're gonna have all of these different options that you created. The next thing I wanna show you is layer mask stacking where you can essentially use different types of textures within your graphic. So we've already got this one group with our main sort of layer mask uh, that we just used, right? So now what you could do with this is actually put this group into another group. So I'll hit Command G. And so now we've got a group within a group and now we can add a layer mask to this group. So now we've got double layer masks. So now I'm gonna bring in the Thrift Lord brush set. So we'll go to this hamburger menu. We'll go to import brushes. We'll navigate to the Thrift Lord brush set folder highlight this ABR file, click open. So this brush set comes with a recipe book where I'm essentially giving you some recommendations on different combinations of brushes that you can use um, with this method. With this second layer mask selected, I'm gonna grab brush number 32 and then set the foreground color to black and then just paint in here. And this is gonna give us some lighter distressing over the entire graphic. What I've found is that a combination of, you know, having some of these larger pockets of distressing with an overall sort of like washed look just creates a really nice vintage effect. In this recipe book, it's 32 plus 26. So we've used 32. And so I'm gonna go back to our original layer mask and I'll change the foreground color to white, then go to edit, fill, and that's basically going to get rid of our original texture that we added, right? Now I'll select brush 26 and sort of use that clicking method to just add more areas that are like heavily distressed. So just trying to make this look as authentic as possible. And so combining, you know, different textures is a good way to do that. Now, because we use these layer masks, if I remove the background, you see the texture has actually knocked out parts of the graphic which is exactly what we want. So if you just use the brushes sort of 
as brushes, you created a new layer and you just sort of painted around on your canvas, you would see all of the black from your brush, right? And so that's not gonna work very well for whatever printing method you're using. I've just found that using layer masks allows you to have more control overall. One final thought before we get out of here, this is really important. I participated in the vintage t-shirt community for a really long time. I've bought and sold t-shirts, you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars. I've got grails in my closet. I love vintage t-shirts, not only important for like the environment continuously you know recycling t-shirts and people wearing vintage shirts like that aspect is is important but i know it's how a lot of people make their living as well the last thing i want is for anyone to watch this and make t-shirts that look vintage pass them off as vintage i hate that um, don't do that. The truth is over the last 15 years as a professional designer, I've just been asked so many times to recreate different vintage looks for bands and artists and clothing brands. And so that's part of my job. It's also my job as an educator to show people how to do this. I always liken it to a karate instructor with a room full of people and basically saying like, here's how to do this thing. But like, don't take this information and run out of this class and go kick a bunch of people's asses. That's not why we're here. Personally, I don't think that the person who's buying a, a clearly fake vintage style t-shirt at Target is the same person who's also going to buy, you know, a shirt on Grailed for thousands of dollars. But that's just my opinion. That's the last thing I want to say. If you learned something in this video, please hit the subscribe button. We're still in this place where 70% of people who watch my videos are not subscribed and it's so disappointing. So please hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.